So welcome to the third video. Remember this is all about denominators that are unlike. So when we look at these, the first thing we should notice is that now we have binomials in the denominator, so they should get parentheses. To make a common denominator here, we need to multiply by the missing factors. So that if I have an x plus 1 and my other denominator is an x plus 2, then my common denominator is going to be the product of x plus 1 times x plus 2. Remember, product just means multiply. So how do I make that denominator from what I've been given? Well, I need to multiply the first fraction. It needs an x plus 2 in the denominator. Remember that I can't just multiply 1. I have to multiply both the numerator and the denominator. So I multiply the numerator also by x plus 2. The second fraction is missing x plus 1 so that it would now have the common denominator. But whatever I do in the denominator, I also have to do in the numerator, because I have to multiply by that ugly one, right? It can, I can multiply it, but it has to be something over itself. Now, I'm going to show this as a separate step to make sure that everything gets distributed properly. So I'm going to write this out as 3 times x plus 2 plus times x plus 1. And now it's just a matter of simplifying. So we need two distributive steps. Plus 5x plus 5. And I'm keeping that common denominator. From there, I could combine like terms. 3x plus 5x would give me 8x. 2 plus 5 is 7. And my denominator was just x plus 1 times x plus 2. If I can factor, I should. Right? If I could simplify this further, I can't. I should. But 8x plus 7, there's no common factor, so I can't go any further, and that's just simply my answer. Now, I think I'd like you to try numbers 11 and 12 on your own, but let's talk about one more type of problem. Let's go down to number 14 together before you try some on your own. Let's go down here to number 14. I chose number 14 for two reasons. The first is that it's a subtraction problem. The second is that in the denominator, to get that common denominator, the first thing we have to do is actually a factoring step. So, is actually a factoring step. So, we go ahead and we say, this is a quantity. And then we need to factor this, the pair of numbers that multiply to negative 21 but add to negative 4. So this denominator is really x minus 7 times x plus 3. So that my common denominator, this has x minus 7 and this denominator has x minus 7 times x plus 3. So to make it common, to make them match, I really only need to change one part. Right? My common denominator could be x minus 7 times x plus 3. So 
So my first fraction just needs to be multiplied by x plus 3. Oops. Over x plus 3. And my second fraction already has the common denominator, so I don't have any multiplying to do there. Again, it's my notes, so I'm going to write out that step. I have x times x plus 3 minus x plus 3. Now I put that in parentheses because I don't want to forget about distributing that negative. I need to make sure that when I do this that I, I get both a negative x and a negative 3. So we're working here x squared plus 3x minus x minus 3 all over x minus 7 times x plus 3. All right, combining some like terms here, we get x squared plus 2x minus 3 all over x minus 7 times x plus 3 oh this numerator is factorable A pair of numbers that multiply to negative 3 but add to positive 2 leading 1 so x plus 3 times x minus 1 all over common denominator x minus 7 times x plus 3 and I can simplify this time x plus 3 over x plus 3 becomes a 1 so that my final answer for this problem is x minus 1 over x minus 7 And if you want the parentheses, you can put them in there. So there's a lot of steps to these problems. Why don't you give everything else on this page a try and come back and check your work. I think you can handle it. As you're checking your work, I would just like to point out here in number, I guess it's number 12, that either of these answers would be acceptable. So that if you saw that it has a common factor of three and you undistributed it to check, that's fine. But, you sh but if you happen to have seen right away that undistributing is pointless because we won't be able to simplify, then you don't have to do it. It would only be required if we did it and it would simplify. So just be cautious with that. I think number 11 went well. And then down below, too far. There we go. Number 13 and number 15. I have a feeling you did just fine on those. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask in class. That puts us at the end of unlike denominators.